You're listening to the King of the Fort podcast, offering in-depth analysis on all things Boston Celtics with your hosts, Jim and Mike Quigley. All right, Mike, so we're, we're recording this in the middle of a layup line going on and Memphis just hit a three here in the third quarter against the Celtics. So I, I don't think this one's going to turn out too well for them. But um, let's just start right with um, some two new reports. Keith Smith of Keith Smith of Celtics blog and yahoosports.com and Matt Moore of the Action Network are both reporting right now that the Celtics are the front runners in the Aaron Gordon sweepstake. Um, both are reporting that the, the asking price the Celtics have met of two firsts. Um, there's kind of unknown what that extra player would be. The difference in the reports are that the Celtics are also in on Evan Funny and um, that the Magic uh, looking for in a Fournier, Gordon, Dale, um, two picks, and Marcus Smart. Um, that deal doesn't make sense to me um, because uh, you, you, you need a facilitator right now for the Celtics offense. And, makes sense for the Magic, not the Celtics. Yeah, not the Celtics. Yeah. Uh, not for this team, anyways. So, um, Fournier that, is a bit of a facilitator, but he's not. He's not yeah. what? He's not going to know the not offense and Mm -hmm. Um, he's not what Marcus has certainly given them tonight offensively and moving things around and keeping things going. Um, I just, Aaron Gordon in a vacuum, I think is a perfect fit. You know, he's the guy that we've talked about for months here. Um, I think two firsts is probably reasonable. Uh, you know, Matt Moore's reporting that there would, um, conceivably be protections on those picks. Um, and on one of them, um, pretty um, strenuous protection. So I don't know what that means. Um, who that player would be or players. I think it's probably top 20, top 25 protections. Yeah, maybe on the second. Maybe there's no the protection second. this year. Um, and I, I don't know. I, I imagine... You might want to put protections on that one for this year. That's what you would prefer. Yeah, mm -hmm. because this draft is loaded. And this team so, sucks. Yeah, this draft is loaded. Um, and that's where Danny would have to make the decision that um, Aaron Gordon is just you get, would be much better than anything you get in this draft. Mm -hmm. uh, I imagine the Magic are probably asking, starting off asking Rob Williams, although it, we, that might not make sense because they have Vucevic that they don't plan to move. So maybe it's a couple of wings. Maybe it's Pritchard. And, uh, and um, I think Neesmith probably makes the most sense for them. If you're talking about a young a young player from the Celtics. Uh, you know, the Magic already have Cole Anthony, and then they have Fultz coming back from a serious injury, but yeah, somebody was productive and they signed long-term. So in my assessment, if I was Orlando looking for young talent, it, I mean, Pritchard, I would, fine. But I just don't see where he fits in on their roster. For me, it would be it would be Aaron E. Smith. Um, and, and the two first-round picks. Now, if they're asking for Rob Williams, even with Vucevic at center, it still makes sense to ask for Rob. Uh, Rob's a great a great center, a young talent who's playing very well right now, and you don't know um, if the Magic are going to try to move Vucevic this, this offseason. And a lot of the times during the trade deadline, it, you'll, you'll see – you'll see trades being set up for the summer. So if if they were asking for Rob Williams, it's possible they're doing that to see if they can move Vucevic this summer on, on another deal that they're working out. Um, so in that sense, that would make sense. Um, you'd be replacing an athletic Aaron Gordon with an athletic Rob Williams and then two first round picks. That's a great deal for Orlando. I don't, I don't love that deal for the Celtics if it's Rob. I think that, you know, we're seeing a lot of potential of, of somebody long term for the Celtics who could be, you know, possibly an All Star caliber starting center. So I don't know if that's something you want to give up in that trade. Um, and so you would, you would hope that Danny countered. Well, what's, what's your second options after Rob? And maybe it's Neesmith, but also this. Um, so Neesmith and a Grant Williams. Um, maybe Grant makes more sense on that Magic team than Pritchard does, but Pritchard's a better player, so it could be Neesmith and, and Pritchard. 
Um, I would almost be more comfortable with Danny doing something like that than throwing the raw. So, Mike, I, I think that's a good point with uh, Vucevic. I, you know, if they're intending to trade him, I guess, I, they, mm-hmm. by all accounts, if they're not looking to move him, that they see him as part of their core, unless they're completely blown away. Uh, <laughs> And I wonder if teams value him like we've seen with other trades where it's three ones and and more mm-hmm. uh, to get him. I, I I just for that position I don't know if they'll get that. Um, you're right about they 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 are stocked up well at point guard position. Um, I don't know as much about Cole Anthony, so I can't really um, speak to him. But obviously, he's a tough kid. He's he's good. They're invested in um, Fultz, that's for sure. And, yeah, uh, you know, and Pritchett. Yeah, I think he's a backup point guard in this league. So that's what they would be getting. I, I just, there's not a lot more the Celtics have that I think would be appetizing um, yeah. for them. I agree. And it's interesting because when I hear the Marcus Smart rumor that that they want to throw a Fournier to get Marcus Smart, it's almost like they're in a slow rebuild, but still want to contend. Um, so well, moving Aaron Gordon's contract to get some young pieces, not moving Vucevic and bringing in a tough, veteran well, player who helps a rebuild like smart i could see um, them wanting to resign smart in two years and not gordon because he's you know isaac is there who they have locked up and he fits mm-hmm. kind of what they're trying to build but they, they you know they would be building a team with not a lot of scoring with full smart and isaacs they'd be a little you know, if you want to win in this nba 85 84 maybe that's what they're trying to do um so uh, i i it's a good point you know i think <laughs> You, I, I get, you're always going to ask for the the best player. Um, I don't, you know, I, I, I got to think this is the magic leaking it to Matt Moore. Keith Smith is also, although he's tied in up here, he he's covered the magic before he lives down in Orlando. So I wonder if he's getting that somewhere. Um, the Evan Fournier, it just it doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Unless Orlando's demanding that happens in a trade, which doesn't make a lot of sense why they would demand that. As part of the deal, um, he's off the books this year anyway, so it's not like you're trying to get rid of a bad salary for years to come. Um, and the more I think about it in terms of Gordon, the, the most important thing for them, I, I got to think, is, is the draft picks, right? Those two first-round picks. Uh, so, um, you know, I I guess Williams still would have value. They could move him in a separate trade if it's not for yeah. this offseason. So, yeah, yeah, I'd be interested to see how this unfolds. Um, I would even, you know, if I was Danny, I would counter with, you know, let's take Rob off the table. Are you interested in another first round pick? Um, that's how much I wouldn't want to trade. Yeah, uh, I wouldn't. I don't think I'm trading Aaron Gordon for three first round picks with only two years on the deal. I yeah. think two is probably a lot. I, I think a lot of teams have backed off because they're asking to. What you're reading now is Gordon wants nothing to do with uh, Houston. Um so that's he kind of, he, he's kind of told them I'm not resigning there if you send me there. Um, and then, uh, you know, so it sounds like the Celtics are Denver right now, the two really remaining front runners. If you, if you believe reports, I mean, this is a um, wacky season where things are just thrown out there. So maybe we're being uh, sold a bunch of smoke right now. So we'll see, you know, um, I, I think he's a good fit. I think he fits a lot of the holes that this team has, including um, three-point shooting. Uh, he has decent playmaking, like you mentioned, and he, he's a good rebounder. The other report that's out there that's interesting, um, and I think a lot less likely to happen for a lot of different reasons, but you have the John Collins, um, Bojan Bajanovic. Is it Bojan or is it the other one? But one of the Bajanovic no brothers. What um, a bad signing that was. By yeah. Atlanta. Uh, for a potentially a Marcus Smart deal, and I imagine a little something else. It's an interesting. Um, it's an interesting trade. I mean, to think about what this off season would look like for the Celtics if that trade happened would be yeah. really interesting because uh, it's either you're paying the tax or you're trying to move a player who has a max salary uh, to re-sign John Collins. Well, you bring in a guy like John Collins who years absolutely line up with Tatum and Browns. Um, mm-hmm. So the growth can happen with the three of them on the same and Rob line. Williams. Yeah, and, and Rob Williams on the same timeline. He's an 18 and 9 guy. Um, defensively, he is what he is. He's okay. He's not anything special oh, at all. Um, but maybe with someone behind him, it's it's a little bit better. Um, 
Bajanovic is is a guy that you know can facilitate a little bit, shoot, plays the wing position. Is, is that extra wing that? They How long is he have? locked up for though? He's up for another four years at um, about I think seventeen a year or something like that. Um, so you would have him locked up. I don't think that's a terrible contract for a wing player in this league. I, you know, um, you would have you be committing so. Uh, Collins turned down four and ninety, so I think he's going to be looking for at least what Jalen got in his contract. Um, so you'd be well, well into the tax with this. And again, maybe it doesn't matter. Um, but Wick has said you would only pay for it for a championship team. Does that mean they try to move Walker in the off season? Um, you know, if they do that, they're going to be really limited at the point guard position. With Smart, if Smart was involved in this. Tri- trade and then you move Walker out you're left with just Pritchett on the roster and then trying to figure out how you fill that maybe it's through the trade uh, you, um, but it, it really um, I don't care how much uh, you, how much they spend that's their business yeah. they, they've made a lot of money since they bought this team that's for sure you know well you bring in a player like Collins you don't need your point guard to be a, a scorer you really need a facilitator and somebody who can defend like a George Hill or something yeah um, so yeah, I, I could see so that, that that's, working. That's what you'd be looking at. Mm-hmm. And, and, you know, the only reason I bring up the tax is they haven't, since that 08 squad, that 08 to 11 or whatever it was squad, they really haven't paid into it with the exception of one year. I think it was that Kyrie, Gordon Hayward, um, Al Horford, yeah. Mm-hmm. They haven't come close to really paying into it since. And, uh, you know, you got to think that's by design based on what their benches look like. I know. And so, I, I think something that I'm starting to think about a little bit more and keep in mind, trades that are made and are not made, are these all Danny's decisions? I, I don't think they are. I think ultimately you need Wick's sign-off on these, especially when it comes when we're talking big money into the tax. So if we hear that the Celtics don't make a deal, and we don't hear a lot of reasons why, I, th- I think that needs to be a consideration of why it didn't happen. A serious consideration, especially when we're talking about these larger contracts um, that Collins is going to demand in the offseason. Yeah. You know. And that's a it's also a big ask to to take on a contract like Bonvanovic. When you I guess that's a that's a guy locked up for four years who's not playing well after he got the contract. He well he got well. hurt. He he he's been playing really well since he's come back in this winning streak. Um and he had a knee injury. He was hurt. Um, wing depth is expensive. Even mediocre wing depth is expensive. Um, that's why it's so important to draft well. That's why it was length for years has been so disappointing. Because yeah. you were able to provide wing depth that cost effect. It's it's a really big bonus. And um, mm-hmm. it's a premier position in the league. And so he's an average, a little bit slightly above average wing. And that's seventeen million dollars. Yeah, that's that's the market for that, you know. So, I, I, you know, that's an interesting trade to me. I really like John Collins. I think it's less likely, and I think that has a lot more to do with the dollars and cents behind it than um, yeah. the fit on the floor. Unfortunately, yeah, it sounds the fit like- on the floor. I think works. The timeline works with Tatum and Brown. Yeah. So the deadline's Thursday, right? Yeah, I don't know the time. Is it four o'clock? Is that? I think, I think so. so. Yeah. Yeah, I um, I don't think anything's going to get done till at least sometime on Thursday. Even with things heating up, I think teams really hold out to find out. Yeah, you know, they're like they, they're like everyone else. They everyone works better when you get closer to the deadline. Yeah, <laughs> you put things off, and mm-hmm. uh, you know Memphis just had another three to gone up, go up nine here in the fourth quarter, but uh. Yeah, I, I think I, I'm tending to think the Celtics are going to make a move. I, I still wouldn't be surprised if it's two. Um, if they bring in a Gordon, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see one of their centers also get shipped out of here. Um, yeah, makes sense. You know, I don't want to see Tice. Uh, I think he's, you know, I thought he played exceptionally well against Orlando the other night. Mm-hmm. And um, I think he's given them a great energy here. And, and you still see um, with Rob these moments of inconsistency as Jeff Teague just misses another free throw. So we have yeah, Rob. Um, he looked like he was like on cocaine in the first quarter against 
who was that the other day? It was uh, one of the shitty teams we lost to. Yeah, yeah, Not Cleveland, the other one. The Kings. Yeah. He was yeah. just grabbing balls and just like chucking them at people's feet. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, not looking at who he was passing to, all those that first quarter, just the turnovers by the Celtics and the lack of effort. Um, it's hard for me to to see they're in such a tough spot. If they didn't have this TP, there would be really no reason to make a trade at the deadline. No, and I, I actually think tonight's kind of a bummer because I thought this is actually a pretty big game. They they're playing five and seven nights, starting with that Orlando game. Um, I, I Milwaukee really, back to back, and then yeah, I really thought they, on the road they needed to go three and two in this uh stretch. And I thought tonight was winnable, they've had great success against Memphis. And then you lose Tatum, you obviously don't have Walker in there, and you just see the in this second half, particularly the, the lack of depth and um, the problems it's causing this the Celtics. Yeah, they're having a really yeah. hard time stopping anybody off the dribble. That was yeah. it, it really evident in Cleveland. You know, Sexton and Garland were just, I mean, they're both good, but they were just getting to the paint. Yeah, there's no ball, there's no ball pressure at all. That, and, and there's so much inconsistency on defense. Yeah, the period. fourth quarter against Utah. Yeah. That was a game they could have won. And, and not only that, just like the inconsistent effort is what it is sometimes. You know, I've seen a couple times where Jalen Brown is like dry humping somebody to the basket. Like he's behind him and just like bumping into him all the way to the hoop. You, you like, get four guys playing hot and you'll have one playing off. I, you yeah. know, I think a great example was the other night. It was almost like two straight possessions, but uh, Kemba got switched on and he's down on the post and Vucevic, Vucevic has a ball up top and Tice puts tremendous pressure and it might have even been a foul, but he caused the turnover. Celtics got the ball. A um, couple possessions later, almost the exact same scenario, but now Walk is on the post again. I think it's against Gordon. And Tatum is covering the ball handler, and he's playing off him. And the pass was easy, and it either was a, a layup or an M1. Oh, <laughs> but it, it shows that commitment of, you know, why you need to bring ball pressure all the time. And not over aggressive, but good smart ball pressure to make even uh, entry passes difficult. Um, or else teams like you're seeing like here get going. You know, the Memphis was going to the hoop, going to the hoop, and now they feel good about themselves and they're making three point shots and getting fouled. Yeah, that's it. And the other side of it too, I mean, even the game they won against Orlando, they in their last five games alone, in three of those games, they ended with single digit single digit yeah. free throw attempts. It's almost how, like how the fuck does that happen? Yeah, yeah, um, I know. I, 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 the last game I didn't wasn't didn't bother me as much because they I thought were drilling they, every three they shot. Well, it wasn't. They they were open shots too. So mm -hmm. like, in the Celtics never get open shots, so it's good. And I thought they got a bunch of them in the first half tonight as well. Um, I think I think the offense has actually been a lot better over these last two games, this one included. But you're right. They 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 can't beat guys off the dribble, and and they. And when they do, they shy away from contact. You, you know, the weird thing was, and that Cleveland was a Sacramento game. They were scoring oh, they, all points in the paint. No, that was the Utah game. No, no, it was the Sacramento game. They only shot four free throws. Yeah, Sacramento they were going game. to the hoop ball game. Yeah, well, maybe. I think it was, yeah, maybe it was both of them then. And, mm -hmm. and But they really weren't getting fouled. Yeah. You know, they really <laughs> weren't getting So it wasn't like they were getting a bad whistle. It was more that. They kind of shine away from that. And Utah is unique in a sense of they can play you over aggressively and they realize they have to go bear there to kind yeah. of wait for you. But it's been disappointing. And they had a great four game winning streak before the All Star break. And it's, it's, it's just extremely disappointing the way they've been playing. I, I don't know if there's any, I mean, yeah, it, they're, they're still in. It. It's it's they don't finish. They don't finish possessions. They don't finish quarters. Um, you know, they'll get a miss, and four guys will be around the ball, and it will be an offensive rebound for the other team. Somehow, will bounce to them. They'll get a deflection, and they won't complete the steal. They they'll they'll throw a nice entry pass, and they'll dribble it off their foot. It, it's you know, even when they play hard, they're making stupid mistakes. A, the other night I saw four guys rush out at a shooter. It, it, it's just, there's a lack of trust and 
I think, individual ability on the floor with some of the role guys. And I think that's translating to a lack of trust into team basketball. Um, Because, you know, we complain about who's – we we talked about this bunch, but we complain about who's on the floor all the time. But if you put in Neesmith for Grant Williams, you put in Semi Ojale for Neesmith, what difference does it make? Yeah, it really doesn't. It's one six half dozen of the other. Some nights one might give you good effort. Another night they'll give you nothing. And, and it's so inconsistent. If you're a coach, who do you know who to play? And I guess just run with the young guys in that situation. Mm-hmm. But he's trying to win games. He's trying to win games. Yeah. I don't know where they go from here. It's um, It's hard to see this team winning a, a playoff round if they're not at home. Mm-hmm. Uh, they're just so awful on the road. Um, luckily, they're still alive because the East is pretty bad. It's just a bunch of middling teams. Um, so there's an opportunity that they still can catch Miami and Atlanta. But it just it's really – even the star players um, – Night to night, the effort is is missing for long periods of time. Um, whether it's disrespecting their opponent and just not showing up, uh, it's uh, it's um, it's just been a disappointing year. It hasn't been fun. No, yeah. no, it hasn't. I think that's why Danny needs to make a deal with the deadline. Because mm-hmm. um, you lose tonight, you got to assume they're going to lose Wednesday or whenever it is against. Uh, Milwaukee, although Giannis is out tonight, so maybe they'll catch a break and he'll be out on Wednesday and they just don't. Giannis is out tonight, but they scored 47 points in the first quarter. Oh, there you go. Yeah. So maybe they don't see the Celtics as a worthy opponent and just give Giannis another night off. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I, I think they, they obviously, they need to make a move. Um, and why don't we do this? If they make a move Thursday, why don't we promise to find some time on Thursday to get on this and, and discuss whatever that the breakdown of that trade is and what that means for the rest of the season. And maybe probably more importantly next season, mm-hmm. uh, because I, I think the best we can hope out of this is they bring in someone it gives them a boost. They win a playoff round. They feel good about their core going forward into next year. And um, you build off of that. Uh, and Danny, did you see Desmond that. Bain score nine straight points in the second quarter tonight? Who did? Desmond Bain. Did he? Yeah. yeah. Well, those things are going to be watched, you know. And Bay's the other guy, right? That is just really, really CD good. Bay. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't know if he's really, really good or if he's just really, really good against the Celtics. I, I think, you know, teams are interested in him right now because he's really good and the Pistons don't want to move him. So. Uh, All right, Mike, so why don't we pick this up Thursday and we'll see what happens.